Okay, so I want to introduce Bill Moot, for those of you that may not know of Bill. Bill is uh, one of our original members. Um, really puts a lot of uh, effort into helping people with their health. And uh, I'm going to let Bill take it from there. Bill Moot. We're all excited today, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you some great stuff today because I believe my goal is to help you bring abundance into your life, whether it's in health, finances, or personal relationships. So how many here have heard of the Law of Attraction? All right, the whole room. I'm just so lucky to have all you great people here today. But how many of you think the Law of Attraction works for you every hour of the day? Oh, yeah. All right, so you guys are bringing everything you choose into your life. No. Yes. No. See me for that Miriam. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so when I have, well, I'm going to tell you, I went through two years of figuring out why the law of attraction works or how the law of attraction works. And what I found was there's more than one law. There's probably, we're going to talk about nine laws and principles, and a law is something like the law of gravity, when you drop a ball, it hits the ground. So these are laws. That means that if you do this, this will happen. But how does all that work, and how does it all come together? I'm going to say one thing today that a couple make a couple profound statements, I believe are highly profound. It moved my business from $20,000 a month in volume up to $50,000 within 30 days. Once you understand how you create in your life, you have one thing, the first thing we got to understand is everything is energy and energy is everything. So what we do to create is we move energy. We transform. You can't make more energy and you can't make less energy. All you can do is transform it from one thing to another. So if you have the energy of a river coming down the stream, the flow of the river goes through the dam, generates electricity, and that energy goes to your house, and you turn the switch on and you get a light. So you keep transforming that energy. So what we do, we create everything that happens in our lives, we create it. The light forms of energy attract. So the first, uh, one of the first laws is living in the now. And living in the now, it kind of uh, brings in a part of all the other laws. So I'm not going to go into in great detail, but what you thought about what happened yesterday is gone. It's past. If you dwell on what happened yesterday, what the boss told you when you're driving home from work, Guess what? You're going to bring more of that in your future. So if you, you focus on yesterday, it's going to show up tomorrow. All you have is right now. What you, what you think right now is what shows up in your future. And I'm going to give you an analogy, a way that you can bring this into your life every minute, every second, and every hour of the day. And I'm going to use an analogy called the bucket. The bucket analogy. And what that is, is what I'm going to say is your conscious mind is the materials your subconscious mind uses to create your outer and inner world. So the conscious mind is what your, your, is going to be your thought, what you have control of. And the bucket is going to be your subconscious mind. The outside of the bucket represents your life, what flows out into your life. Now, I'm gonna, if you can picture two hoses going into that bucket to fill that five-gallon bucket, one puts in dirty water and one puts in clean water. So when you put the positive into the bucket, the water is pristine and clear. When you put the negative into the bucket, it's dirty and mucky. So when you go through life and what overflows out of the bucket is what you create. So we've got to be very careful what we put in our bucket. So the one thing you ask yourself is, when you're out there and you're speaking to somebody or you're talking to somebody, is this what I choose to put in my bucket? 
So when, the, when you're pouring the clean water in the dirty bucket, it takes a while for that dirt to flow out. So some people will say, well, Bill, this doesn't work for me. You know what? You've got to give it a chance to get the dirty stuff out. So some of it may come out. But it will flow pristine and clear once you keep adding clear water in it. And you can change those garden hoses, if you picture a garden hose, into a fire hose if you put all the nine laws and principles together at one time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand out a little sheet here for you. I mean, there is a course. I spent two years doing, uh, during the research of this with somebody else that actually created an eight CD set. And it's all on, uh, it's all on CDs. But during that time, I learned a whole lot. <laughs> I learned a lot if you were on the phone a couple hours a day talking about how are we creating things? You know, I go, well, I didn't create this, or I didn't create that. And then we talk about it and figure out how we did create it in our lives. So living in the now is very important, and it comes into the, to the rules of all the nine laws. I'm not going to be able to give you a lot of examples because of the time constraints. But the number, the number two law that we have, how we personally, how we manifest things for ourselves, is thought. So our thoughts have a vibration. So what we think about shows up. I don't know if you ever, uh, this is really what the law of attraction really came out when I first saw it, is you just think of something and it will come to you. But you can be out there and, and thinking about getting a new car, and you don't have the money. And all of a sudden you end up with a new car. Maybe it's two years old, maybe it's a slightly new car. <laughs> But you end up with that car. But you think about it first. So when you have a thought come in, make sure that thought is, you know, things that are true, things that are honest, just, pure, lovely, and things of good rapport. Those are the kind of thoughts that you should choose to put in your bucket. If you choose to have abundance in your life. Because... In the law of abundance, there's there's no shortage. There's plenty for everybody. Man limits his own abundance. You know, so if if, if your God is omnipresent, if he's all knowledgeable, if he's everywhere and all powerful, he's an abundant God, then he's unlimited. And God is unlimited. So if you limit God, whatever your religion is, if you limit abundance, you're limiting God. Example is, if you sow a seed, you get a tree that bears fruit with an abundance of seeds to replant more seeds. So there's no lack of abundance in the world. I mean, there are companies trying to control the seeds. There are companies trying to control the oil. But that is their greed that focuses on that. There's plenty for everybody. So now we need to change the world. My goal is to change the focus of the world. You can change any given demographics if you have the square root of 1% of the people coming together on the same thought. It's kind of called the Maharishi effect. And they did this with uh, there's a lot of studies on this. We proved this both biblically and scientifically. There's scientific studies and there's quotes from the Bible. I'm not going to get into quoting the Bible because, you know, everybody has their own quotes. But a lot of this comes from the Bible. Before the one today was printed in the Greek and the Hebrew, it goes back thousands of years. The one thing I've, I haven't seen in all these courses is how you put it all together. How does it work for you in your life? You know, I've been to all these seminars, you know. <laughs> just believe, you know. Just do this, do that, and this will happen. Well, how does that all work? How do you become empowered if you don't know how it all works? You have to have the knowledge of how to put this together and how it works for you. And that's really where, where uh, this comes in. The third, the third law and principle is a spoken word. The power of words. The power of the tongue. It's likened to the rudder on a ship. 
that power can turn that ship as big as it is with the power of that ton. So a horse can be managed and controlled with a bit. So when you say a word, you have a vibration. You put your hand to your throat and you speak a word, it puts out a certain vibration. Life, light vibrations will attract. They will stay together in the body. One thing, when you, uh, there was a doctor, Hashiyomo, Yoshiyama, <laughs> anyway, he, he came up with a study on water. You can change water just by the words you spoke to it or the music you played. And our bodies are 78% water. So when these words and these vibrations come out, you can change your whole body. I know I've been in muscle testing where you just have a bad thought and you can get weak and you can have a happy thought and go to a place of happiness. So when a thought comes into your mind that's negative, you got to change that thought. Clear it out. I mean, change it right then. That's what I mean by living in the now. Be conscious and aware of what's happening now. You change your now, your future will take care of itself. So, a spoken word is very, very powerful. One of the words that say, wouldn't it be nice if everybody knew this? Right? I just said, would not be nice. That's how intricate words are. Isn't it great that this is on a CD course and we can listen to it all the time? I said it is not great. So the words you use create your future. And we're, we can say we're positive, but when I hear people speak, they're not positive. They think they are. But just putting out that vibration now, uh, words like, I want to be rich. Want is a word of lack. If you want to be rich, and you want to have a million dollars, you will continue to get more want. So you will never get the million dollars. Instead, you could say, money comes to me easily. And frequently. <laughs> and frequently. Power words, not waffle words. So you want to use power words, you want to be on a high vibrational frequency. So you, you bring in positive things into your life. It's kind of, you're looking to control energy. And I'll give you an idea about things that happen to you in your life where you didn't have control. If you look at a, if you had a hose and you had a pressure nozzle on the end of the hose, and you turn the water on, that hose would just go like this, right? That's what I call random energy. Life happens randomly to you. <coughs> You may be thinking of it a little, and this guy, and you're getting distracted, and, and things start happening to you randomly. But if you grab a hold of that hose, and put that pressure nozzle and focus it on a spot, man, look at the power of that hose, right? That water. That's controlled energy. So what, when, you create, when, you're, when you're creating your life, it's better, I think, in my mind, to know this is happening because this happens anyway. It happens whether you know it or not. So that means that energy is transforming and creating your life whether you know it or not. You might as well know it. You might as well live in the now. Go after your dreams. All successful people, they go by the nine laws and principles even if they don't know they're doing it. So we all see the 3%. Some of them might know. I mean, they, if they have a mentor or somebody that teaches them most of these laws, they can be successful if you do one harder than the other or you just do all work. Or, you can't do it, but remember, you don't get there by accident or luck. There is no luck to success. If somebody comes to me and says, well, Bill, you were lucky, because I got four sales this week that I didn't, you know, they came to me and I didn't even know where they came from. 
you don't necessarily get back immediately from the person you're dealing with. It may come back from another soul, but it will come. Uh, the fourth, I'm going to go to belief. The fourth principle I'm going to talk about is belief. Belief is huge. And that's, uh, you know, I do what I believe in. What I'm passionate about. The reason I do is because I know that if I don't really believe in it, or I'm not really passionate about it, I'm not going to do the next law of principle, which is work. I'm not going to feel like working. I'm not going to probably do what I need to do to be successful, what I have to do, what I desire. So I'm going to do what I believe in, and I'm going to base it on the things that are honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. The things that I believe are the best thing that can help you. So I'm going to give more value than I make off of whatever I sell, or whatever I'm providing, whatever service. Maybe I'm not even selling anything. I'm still going to give you that value. And belief, you know, it's it's uh, it's one that they always talk about, like in Think and Grow Rich. A lot of the the big guys that are teaching you personal growth talk about belief. Belief is huge, and I believe knowledge builds belief. We had a a gal that went to Bob Proctor. I don't know if you know Bob Proctor, but he does a week course for ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars. And she came back, and he said, she goes, well, Bill, I said, they don't tell you how it works. And she goes, well, no, they say they don't know how it works. They say, if you do this, you do this, you do this, and this will happen. And that's true, it will. But they don't understand how it works. It's the movement of energy, the energy between you and me. Depending on your belief, whether it's God or it's scientific, it could be ether or aether. It's pneumatic, it's in the air. All knowledge is in the air. You need to learn to tap into it. So the next the next one I'm going to talk about is work. So faith or belief without works is dead. So we work towards what we're choosing or what we desire in our lives, what is going to make the world better or other people you know better. So we work towards it. But now work becomes easy or effortless if you believe and it's going towards your, your what your what your goal is, what your result is, what you're working towards, what you choose or desire. I worked 30 years in an industry that I didn't even want to get up every day and go to work <laughs> because it paid the bill. Did I work in something I believed in? I didn't know this. I didn't learn this until I was like 60, almost 60 years old. I didn't know. I worked hard. I was supposed to work hard and have money and have retirement and all that. And I had a good job. Yeah, I have retirement. But it's not enough to sustain my lifestyle. But I worked in a, in a job I could not... I was late for work almost every day, towards the end, before I retired. I had a hard time getting up to go to work. But, you know, I did it. Uh, so it really, work becomes less effort if you work in something you believe or something you feel is good. People and companies become predictable by what they say and do. I'll give you an example, since this company's not around anymore. They had a, a company called Exoto, and they were selling uh, lottery pools to win the lottery. Well, number one, they were all going after gamblers, and gamblers are inherently lazy. <laughs> number two, the focus on the good product they had, they didn't focus on that because they called it affiliate marketing. And number three, the guy got on the conference call and said the business was exploding. Exploding means blow up. Guess what? The company blew up. And I called him and asked him not to use that word on the phone. And he said, okay. And for two weeks he stopped using that word. 
And then he started using it again. And this company blew up. They went out of business. They had a lot of money. So companies and people become predictable by the words they say and what they do. So if I'm talking to you <coughs> and I'm listening, I'm listening to the words you say. Because what that tells me is where you're at. And why do things keep repeating in life? It's because we thought about them in the past. They show up in your future. I had this uh, one lady, she came to me, she says, Bill, I'm going to quit dating. I said, why, you know? I said, man, you're, you're attractive, you look nice. And she goes, well, every guy I ever date ends up being an alcoholic or a drug addict. And she said, I'm just going to quit dating. Well, that's really bad. What to do, you need to change your mindset because you're attracting what shows up. You're talking about the drug, <coughs> and the drug addict, and guess what shows up in your future on your next date? Another drunk or drug addict. Alcohol. So you have to break that chain in your mindset. To be in the proper mindset, you have to build a new, what's called a neural net pathway. So just remember that you need to work. Work is very important. We talk about later, I talk about mastermind groups versus power groups. A lot of the mastermind groups are based on work, more work than, uh, than anything else. If you talk to this many people, you get this result. What's your number and things like that. Where a power group is, and then the mastermind group is only as good as the best person in the group. The power group, everybody has an equal contribution, and you contribute towards harnessing like minds together. When you harness, when you have one person, you might put two to flight. But if you have two you harness together, you may put 10,000 to flight. So the example I give you is Wade and I, when we're together, we're powerful. When we're individually, we're still strong, but we're not as powerful as we are when we're together because we're in a like mind. So you surround your people with a like mind. People with like minds. So it's true. Two brains are better than one. You know, all the sayings, two brains are better than one. But you're really harnessing the energy and the thought. So it's increasing the, the movement of energy. It's very powerful when you harness like minds together. Uh, the sixth law I'm talking about is be thankful. So you need to be thankful for the roof over your over your head. Be thankful for the things that you have. Be thankful for the new car you're going to get. If you get in an accident, don't think about the damage to your car. Think about the new paint job you're going to get. Think about the positive always. Be thankful for the focus on a result, not on the problem. If you ever have a problem, you you uh, you, pet, you you focus past the problem. So say if uh, karate board. Say if you wanted to be. Say if you wanted to be healthy, you wouldn't say you wouldn't dwell on a sickness. So if you had an illness, if you had arthritis, you wouldn't walk around saying, "Oh, I can't go. I've got arthritis, or I can't go. I have a cold." You want to focus on being healthy. Focus on being healthy and well, not on the arthritis. Because if you focus on the arthritis, you'll get more arthritis. You become sicker. You'll actually make yourself sick. That's the power of the mind, what we create in our life. So you can actually heal yourself without a supplement. But that's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. I mean, you meditate, you, you really have to. There's frequency in some, in some supplements. <coughs> Not all of them, but in some of them there is frequency. And those frequencies are what helps you, you know, recover. Number seven, 
I'll talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the nine laws of principle. The first thing you have to do with forgiveness is forgive yourself first. And forgive others. Well, how many times do we forgive? It's a limited number of times you forgive. In the Bible it says seven times seven. So you need to forgive over and over again. It doesn't mean that you have to leave that person in your environment. Doesn't mean that that person you have to stay with them just because you forgave them. You can move them out of your environment, but you have to forgive them and let it go, whatever it is. And the first thing you do is forgive yourself first. We had we had one gal in our study group when we were when we were putting this together, and she had been molested and been to psychiatrists and psychologists for like over 20 years, got on this course and she finally found peace and could sleep at night. So you create that. you got to forgive and let that go. You don't have to go up to the person and say, I'm sorry. That's the one thing about like Alcoholic Anonymous. It's helped a lot of people. But they focus on being an alcoholic. What do they say when they walk in or whatever? They say, I am an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic, yeah. So, so, you know what? That's true. They are, because they said it. They need to change that part of it. They identify themselves. Because it identifies them, and they're always going to be an alcoholic. So that's, that's this one thing I like to put out as an example that when you do these things, you have to think past the problem. You can't focus or dwell on the problem. But forgiveness is, is huge. There's a lot of people, you know, I, men are probably either, <coughs> than, yeah, Mark? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So number eight is giving and receiving, and you need to learn how to give. You can give your time, your money, um, whatever, and say somebody comes to you and say, man, I need 500 bucks to pay my rent this month. Could you loan me 500 bucks? You need to know how they're going to pay the rent the following month. So you need to ask the question, well, if I give you $500 this month, how are you going to pay the rent next month? What's your plan? Because if he doesn't have a plan, or a way to pay next month's rent, guess what? He's going to come back to you for another $500. Pretty soon you're down $5,000. You've been paying his rent for 10 months. So you always say, what's your plan? How do you give? So giving and receiving needs to be done properly. Don't just give wildly. But it also needs to be done because currency, money, is a, a current. It's called currency, so it needs to flow in and back out. So giving and receiving is very important. But you don't want to overgive. You don't want to hurt yourself. But you want to be able to give. It could be time or money. It doesn't necessarily just have to be money. But you don't want to damn the currency up and never give any money out. Because that's called currency dams. When we talk about finances, we can get into visible truth. The last one is environment. So whatever you uh, surround yourself with, whatever kind of people you surround yourself with, you're going to attract. Environment is very, very important. If you're in an abusive relationship, maybe you should end it. Get out. Change your environment and your whole life will change. To have the, draw, uh, the law of attraction work for you for the positive, <coughs> accept responsibility for everything that has happened to you in your life. You're responsible for everything that's happened. That's the one that's hard for people to accept. Give enough time for the dirty water to overflow out of your bucket. So when you start this, give it time to work. Um, step number three, memorize the nine laws and principles. you got to be conscious and aware of the nine laws and principles for them to be working for you all the time. So you understand what's happening. Oh, I put that in my bucket, and here it's going to show up tomorrow. It may be a week from now, but it will show up. Uh, choose to be aware and conscious. Feed the senses of the soul first. And the body will take care of itself. And you can do that with meditation. 
uh, can start by following the nine laws and principles. And I gave you this sheet. What you want to do is you want to put down 25 things you're thankful for. So if you write down 25 things you're thankful for, you will read those out loud when a bad thought comes to your mind. So how do you change a thought? You speak. Because when you speak, you have to think it first. So if you read your, your 25 things you're thankful for when negative stuff comes into your life, you can change that thought. And then make your affirmations, you know, I am. And then think on the things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and things of good report. So if you guys have any questions, you may ask me, because I've been in this for quite a while. There's eight hours of course study on this. My goal is to set a power group up versus a mastermind. I go to mastermind things, but I would prefer to do power groups. And, uh, I like your point that you made when you are trying to straighten out something. You have to change your to change your mind by speaking it. Change the thought. Change the thought. Well, it, it is. That's one of the things that I've taught people for years. Is that biblically, three is complete. When you go into numerology, three is complete. So you have to think it, speak it, and hear it, and then it's a complete transformation. So if you have a thought and you speak it, speak it, it strengthens the thought. It helps build the belief. And if you work towards it, it's going to build more belief, going to bring more thoughts, more creativity in a positive direction. So when you guys look at TV, TV is television. We all talk about vision boards and vision, right? It's named, it's word. It's vibrational frequency is television. So when you see TV, the vision of that makes you open your future. If somebody's watching a lot of hospital shows, you may see a serious health challenge in their future. If you're watching uh, soap operas, you're going to have relationship chaos. <laughs> so that's a vision. And all these things come into your subconscious with your eyes, your nose, your ears, what you hear, see, and smell. If you go out to a, a race, a NASCAR race, and you see the cars going around the track, and you're sitting there all watching those cars, but you go home and see a video of it, guess what you saw? You saw all the ads on all the billboards while those cars were running around. You saw all the ads on the cars, and you didn't even know it. It went into your bucket. It went in. So we take things in through our senses and through the contacts with people and things like that. Any other questions? Great job. Great job. <laughs> you, guys, you guys want to learn more, there's a website, invisibletruth.com and invisibletruth.info. I got a I got a couple postcards here if anybody wants them with testimonials and stuff on them. Thank you for the handout. You're uh, welcome. Nice work, Bill. And the handout. Great information. Yeah. Everybody like that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Would you like to hear Bill speak more often? I had to hear him. Yeah. yeah. I could do a talk on each law. One whole thing. <laughs> 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 Break it down. Sure, that's what do. There's a lot of them.